It's time for some answers. Where did you learn C++ and how do you keep up to date with the current standards? I don't remember exactly how I learned C++. I learned C from those Finnish language books in the local library. I hated it. Particularly the pointer syntax. I was already quite experienced with Turbo Pascal and the syntax felt completely backwards to me compared to what I was familiar with. But when I began using Linux, there were no Pascal compilers for Linux that were compatible enough with Turbo Pascal, so I had no choice but to begin using C. I learned by doing. I wanted to learn how something is done, and I looked up information and experimented until I learned it. Borland C++, the C compiler for DOS that I used, also supported C++, so I began learning C++. At the same time I began realizing how clunky and cumbersome Pascal was in some aspects, such as type conversions. Today Rust evokes the same feelings in me. I borrowed some books from the local library that taught me object-oriented programming and maybe C++ also. Like I said, I don't remember exactly. I learned the principles, virtual inheritance and all the stuff, but I never became a fan of it. I was already familiar with that in Perl and Pascal, which also supported object-oriented programming. I just didn't particularly like it. To me it was a gimmick. In my opinion, Java took that gimmick and married it, which is why I have never been able to like Java. Instead, C++ was to me basically C with some quality of life improvements, such as support for mixed declarations and code, a thing that C also adopted later in 1999, and references which allow for cleaner syntax than pointers do, and function overloading and operator overloading, which had limited uses and veered on the gimmick side. It felt like the IOStream library was the hello world example of operator overloading as in, look what I can do, rather than actual good design. This was my view of C++ until September 1999, when a friend of mine, Juhani Eminen, introduced me to the standard template library. He showed me a simple 12-line program that reads words from the standard input and then prints them out in alphabetical order, along with a number that indicates how many times each word was present. And what's best is that the program had no fixed limits anywhere. You could type as long lines as you like, and as many of them as you like. Stuff like that was very laborsome to accomplish in C, and there is a significant chance that you will make a mistake somewhere along the line. That was a turning point. The standard template library and the template system in general was a total game changer. Since that point, I began favoring C++ over C. After that, C++ was no longer to me a C with shortcuts. C was to me C++ with handicaps, and those handicaps have grown larger and larger by the year. In 2010 I learned that C++ is being actively developed and, then at, and that the new standard C++11 is soon to be released. I was elated. C++ was no longer to me an old language and a relic of the past, but it is actually a modern language that is being actively improved and steered. C++11 was a significant improvement with its smooth semantics, lambda functions, refined auto keyword and much else, and it didn't stop there. We got C++14 and C++17 and now we are getting C++20. C++ I won't lie to you, C++ is an intimidating language, and it is neither perfect nor totally consistent in its design. You will have lots to learn. How do I keep up to date? I have four go-to sources. First, C++ reference. This is the reference manual on all things C++. I visit that site daily. I use it for all things C++, from learning what kind of things some header file contains, to checking what is the order of parameters in std string compare, and sometimes just generally surfing to see if I find something new I didn't know yet. It's a wiki, so it is updated frequently. And then there is Wikipedia, for example, Wikipedia article about C++14. It provides a nice summary. 
a starting point or maybe a reference when you need to recall the name of some particular feature that you are thinking of. Then there are two documents for GCC. GCC projects C++, C++, C++ status and GCC libstdc++ manual status. One is for the compiler and one is for the standard library. These are my four main go-to resources on new things C++. I also browse sites like Reddit CPP for news. I have a question about some unfinished video series or about a video that you have promised but not yet delivered on. Teaching is like writing a book. It is by nature an artistic endeavor. The thing with art is that you need inspiration for it. A breakthrough in condensing information to palatable pieces and in making the presentation entertaining. I have many videos and video series that are in dire need of that inspiration. Sometimes I get inspiration and other times I do not. When I do not have the inspiration, the video can stay in the rut for years. Many of my videos have been in production for years. For example, both the TCPU16 video and the x86 move instruction videos took two years. The Doom Style 3D Engine video was based on an idea that I had had for more than a decade before I finally wrote code for it. Let's see. 3D rendering, fully 3D portal rendering. I began making this project almost immediately after I finished making the Doom style video with portal rendering, and I made a proof of concept for it in the same year. Then it stayed dormant for like five years until I suddenly got an inspiration in 2020, and I began making the series about texture mapping, which hopefully will open the door for the rest of this series too. 3D rendering perspective projections. This is the one for which I posted a teaser with a fish and I promised it would come really soon. I was really planning on making it soon, and I had a clear visual idea in my mind how to carry it out. But when I actually began doing it, I discovered that the idea I had was too complex given my current tools or my proficiency in visual presentation. Thus the video is currently dormant until I get a new inspiration on the visualization. I have not abandoned it. Compiler series episode 5c engine implementation. This series has been dormant for more than two years now. The remaining part is about code generation and involves very long tables of x86 and SNES CPU instructions and subtopics such as Dijkstra's algorithm. I have written lots of script for this video, but the situation is that I have no idea how to break the remaining part into palatable pieces. Until I get inspiration, the project is dormant. C++ for C programmers. I will make more someday. That's all I can say for now. These are projects. These are projects. These are projects which I have. These are projects that I have begun to make at some point and which may surface some day or some year, but which are currently dormant waiting for new inspiration. That's just how the creative process goes. Again, I am sorry about that.